Let's talk about Fines Migration in Espresso. There's been this idea that during an espresso shot, the finer particles, less than 200 microns, also called fines, migrate to the bottom of the filter basket and either block the filter causing channeling or come out into the cup, which ruins the taste. This concept drives people to be more careful in their puck preparation for fear that too much agitation will cause fines to accumulate at the bottom and make this problem worse. However, fines migration is a theory, not a fact. Somehow it has been accepted as a fact by the coffee community in the past 20 years. Some have cited soil research and fines migration, but those tests found fine particles only migrate after a lot of water flows through the soil. In coffee, it would be the equivalent of pulling a 500 to one espresso shot compared to a typical two to one shot. Over the course of multiple experiments, I failed to find proof that fines migrate significantly. I did find that they do migrate a little, but the total migration is less than 1% of all the coffee grounds. I'm going to talk through these experiments, starting with staccato espresso. After developing the staccato shot, I determined fines don't clog the filter basket. In the staccato espresso method, the bottom layer is a fine layer, less than 400 microns in sifted coffee, and the shots still flow in regular time. If the fines really did clog the filter holes, it would not be possible for this shot to work. The fine layer also has other interesting attributes like flowing very quickly for the first drop or two, but then the layer solidifies, the flow slows down, and then picks up speed as more coffee is extracted. I later decided that a transparent portafilter could help me see if fines migrated in real time. I used Compresso to act as a transparent portafilter by putting the coffee grounds above the shower screen with chalk on top to simulate fines. I chose chalk because I needed a substance as fine as coffee fines that would not dissolve. This substance also needed to be visible during the shot and after. I researched chalk and found that it does not dissolve well in water. So I found some chalk in the house and I used a knife to scrape off some powder, which was very fine. I put this on top of the coffee. My thesis being, if fines migrate, then fine chalk should migrate as well from the top to somewhere deeper in the coffee puck. During the test, I did not observe chalk moving deeper into the puck. When the water went into the tube, the chalk kept kicked up in the water, and even as pressure was applied, the chalk seemed less affected. This might be due to the surface area of fines, which is so small that flow forces have less to work with. The main actor to move water is pressure, which causes flow, but flow can only push a particle relative to the surface area. So I'm suspecting that fines migration can happen in methods where the coffee bed is moving around and not compact like pour over, but during espresso, it seemed difficult to prove. When I dissected the puck, I only found chalk at the top of the puck. I cut the puck multiple ways and I did not observe any layer past the very top where the chalk had gone deeper. Here is a cross section and chalk is only observed at the top. Of course, I got some criticism and I looked at the problem from a different angle. In the staccato shot, the fines should come out into the cup, but they don't. They form a solid layer. My theory is that coffee swells during the espresso shot, so fines don't migrate because all paths through the coffee puck close. Additionally, the only way for water to go through the coffee is through the inside of the grounds. I did initial experiments measuring the total volume of a spent puck after a shot, and then a few days later after it dried, it had shrunk in volume. To refine this test, I took spent coffee and I spread a sample onto a piece of paper so I could use image processing to analyze the particle distribution. I took a single sample and I measured the distribution. Then I let it dry for 12 hours overnight. The new measurement was of the same sample and there was a shift in the distribution. I measured the distribution for the sample a few times from the start and there is a trend of the particles shrinking. This shift in distribution is good evidence that coffee absorbs water during extraction, causing it to expand. And then as the water dries out from the puck, the grounds shrink. I then looked at an experiment where I sifted spent coffee. My general theory is that fines extract quickly and degas faster than larger particles, 
and as a result, the water flows through them without impedance. The result of water flowing through them is that they would be less likely to migrate in the puck. I first saw evidence of this by making spent coffee grounds for experiments. No matter how fine the particle distributions, the water would flow very quickly. To fully understand these fine particles, I isolated them using a sifter. Specifically, I used a crew sifter with two screens, 400 microns and 200 microns. The aim was to produce two batches of coffee grounds, coffee less than 200 microns and coffee grounds between 200 and 400 microns. I ended up with enough coffee for two shots of uh, spent coffee grounds. Both of these shots ran fast. The mere fact that the fines less than 200 microns in, the, in a puck didn't clog the filter indicates that water is passing through the fines without clogging in the more general case. Considering fines extract faster than larger particles, they would not be able to cause a clog in the filter or in the puck as they are still water permeable. I then moved on to slicing a puck. The espresso puck is quite a mystery in terms of what goes on inside between preparation and pulling out a spent puck. While it is theorized that particle distribution shift inside, there's yet to be much dissection of the puck to examine particle shifts. I took a cross-sectional cut of an espresso puck to help determine how the particles differ from the top to the bottom. Espresso pucks are solid, but brittle. I ended up working through a few trials for feasibility to simply slice the puck. I started with a very sharp knife, but that didn't help the brittle nature. I tried a diagonal cut, but the cutting still let things fall apart in an uncontrolled way. Then I had a revelation when emptying out a wet puck from a mocha pot. Dry coffee grounds are brittle, but wet coffee grounds stick together. I tried cutting a few wet pucks before I pulled the shot I was really interested in studying. I slowly wet the puck from top to bottom to make sure it was all wet but not soaked. Then I cut at an angle. I let these cuts dry overnight and they dried pretty quickly. I measured the particle distribution using image processing. I looked at the total number of particles at first instead of area of the image or estimated volume. It seemed to show a small shift in fines from the top to the bottom. L6 seems like an outlier based on the other layers. So I did the experiment again with more samples. I did three cuts, top, middle, and bottom. For each, I took three samples and I looked at the median across distribution bins. We see a small pattern where there are more smaller particles in the bottom than the top or the middle, around three or 4% in total. For particles around 100 microns or less, the total difference is 10% of those particles. This story changes when we look at area in the image. I have metrics for estimating volume and they show a similar pattern. The trouble with imaging is that the third dimension is hard to capture. So I stuck with the area of the particle. In this view, there is still a difference of 0.6% of the grounds. Both suggest fines migrate a small amount and in total less than 1% of all the coffee. In conclusion, my original theory is that fines migrate and after multiple experiments, I discovered only a small percentage of fines migrate and I doubt such a small percentage would have an exorbitant effect on the puck without further evidence. These experiments help open the door to questioning things in coffee we consider fundamental but in reality, they were myths turned into truth.